So we're going to yeah. celebrate. Let's go surfing now. Everybody's learning how. Come on. Improv is about saying yes. It's about living in the moment and playing. And your name? Maury Wills. Maury Wills! Woo! Actually, he was a king. <laughs> He used to be a shortstop yeah. for the Dodgers mm -hmm. way back in, in my childhood. ESML Improv is a class for students who have early stage memory loss uh, to come and to play um, and to live in the moment. The extraordinary thing about improv is there are no wrong answers. Um. Something that is crazy and silly is actually more fun to work with. I'm Pam Nolte, co-founder of Taproot Theatre Company. I came out of a university with a theatre degree and uh, have been acting ever since. I got a call one day from a woman who I knew who said, Pam, I'm working with The Gathering Place here in Greenwood, which is a memory loss uh, group. And would Taproot ever be interested in doing some improv or some theater classes for people with memory loss? So she gave me information on what was just starting around the nation as far as improv work with memory loss. Thank you. I think I could play a little bit of piano now, and I've never played piano in my life. And I got crazy excited about it. She didn't know I had lost my own mom with Alzheimer's years before, and uh, I'd never heard of anything like this. So I came back to the team here and said, is this something that we could do? Yes! yes. yes. I graduated in 2000, and I've been acting since then, mostly improv, and I worked in special ed in the schools for a lot of years, so when Pam approached me, it just kind of naturally came together and made sense. Doing some of the research, doing some of the studying, finding out what's being done, what's working, why is it working. Looking Glass Theatre was doing amazing work, kind of pioneers in the area as far as I know. So looking at what are other theatre companies doing, what can I learn from them, taking that knowledge and then going, what's it going to look like here with us? So we did a test run the first year with The Gathering Place. That was in 2010, and we have been doing the work ever since. Velma's got a trumpet going. Yeah, Velma, nice. Dementia is this umbrella term that refers to changes in uh, the structure of the brain that cause changes in thinking abilities that interfere with day-to-day -day life. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia, about two-thirds to maybe 70% of all dementias. And that's marked by this kind of series of changes at the cellular level, you know, both outside and within the cell, that start in midlife. And it's this slow, kind of gradual accumulation of that pathology in the brain that leads to structural change in the brain over time, leads to changes in memory, language, attention. And there's some evidence that by continuing to exercise those pathways, continuing to use you know, the networks in the brain, that continues to strengthen those. That includes things like cardiovascular exercise, you know, keeping your brain active, staying socially engaged, maybe some dietary changes that all promote cognitive health. And when you think about you know, improv, you've got a social component, you've got a very stimulating but kind of pressure-free environment. What is improv? What are we doing today? We're using our imagination, okay? We're using our memories that are deep inside of us. Al, you were showing us some really fine muscle memory. Yeah, <laughs> that's procedural memory. That's a big word. It's just muscle memory, okay? Emotion lives with us in our memories for a long, long time. One of the, the barriers to a diagnosis and one of the unfortunate consequences of a diagnosis sometimes is isolation. 
because of the stigma that still exists around dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Um, you know, people are worried about embarrassing themselves or others by repeating themselves or being, not being able to find the right word in a sentence uh, or maybe, you know, kind of losing their train of thought. So they sometimes you know, isolate and they don't interact socially. So there's a real deprivation of you know, that community connection. They, they close themselves off or are closed off because of what's happening internally for them with their brain because it's harder to come up with words or thoughts or memories. I was diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment about four years ago. We've been coming to this class for two years. outside with us, right? So we are here again to play, to do improv. I think care partners should always come, if possible. Being able to see the student in a different light. <laughs> My mom was a preschool teacher. It's hard as a child to let your loved one move into this very, very different sphere. You know, you want him to be, I, want, I wanted her to be my mom still. We don't move as easily into, I just want to be with you where you are <laughs> right this moment. I was diagnosed four years ago. My spouse was the first one to see changes, and then that led to going down and getting involved in the, the Brain and Wellness Center at Harborview. One of the approaches that uh, we employ here are things like mindfulness-based stress reduction and this idea of cultivating mindful attention to the moment. And improv just seems like there's such a great overlap with that. What is the name of this ball, Ico? I have no idea, that's right, it's new to improv. And it gets so easy to do the what if. So if things are this bad now, what are they going to be like in a year or five years from now? And that kind of anxiety is incapacitating sometimes. So to have activities like improv that keep people grounded in the here and now, not the then and there, not contingent on short-term memory or language precision, are just, they're so valuable. I think that some people have a misconception of what Alzheimer's is. They perhaps assume that people with Alzheimer's are all at the very later end stages of the disease and don't realize that they're still here. They're still the same person with personality and desires and wishes and hopes and able to contribute. What am I going to do in the summer? Yeah. Uh, Shade my eyes. <laughs> when they come into this class, they get to be free. And wherever they at when they come in is absolutely wonderful. We yes and and celebrate whoever they are and whatever they can bring. Rob, ultimate. <laughs> and then you guys can celebrate that that's what I brought with you today by repeating that. So their part is agreeing and saying yes, while my part is saying yes and I'll take whatever you give me, and we'll go with it. Full energy from where you are. Right. Rob. Rob. <laughs> Ultimate. Ultimate. If they can only say gibberish, then we find ways to celebrate that that's what they're able to bring. Let's see, what can I say? Make a big, bold sound and send it to someone. OK. OK? Wee! 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 I think one of the big things is that we come here and we play. Those brain neurons are firing twice as fast here in improv as they are sitting at home watching a baseball game. Dick wouldn't agree with that. He's a baseball fan. But that's my interpretation. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. good for the yeah. brain, and it's just so mm -hmm. much fun. Ginny, gonna, gonna make a spacho and eat it every day. We can see a huge difference from the beginning of the hour to the end of the hour in their ability to just be open and, and laughing and, and freeing and not so locked into themselves. In many ways, it's helped me. I love coming to the class. 
I don't have to stay in the house all the time. It gives you some place to go. You uh, interact with other people. Some have the same problems that I may have. We share, and that's a big, big help. We're used to each other, so we look forward to seeing each other. And, you know, it's really a fun class also, as well as helpful. For me, it's very personal. If I had played and my mom had played, it would have been a blessing to both of us. It would have been so good for both of us. I'm going to start with the word love. Here it comes, Ladia. Love. And love, Lolly. Love, Lolly. Lolly. Clarence. Before we go out, it's really important that we just cement that this group has had this time together and that you have been supported by being silly, right? And people have celebrated what you've done and yes, and each other's ideas. And before we head out that door, we just want to make sure that we are thankful and grateful to the people that played with us today. Thank you for making it happen. Let's just put some music together. Just to end the day, you are my son. Shine, sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love, 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 love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Got some riff going. You are my darling, as I lay sleeping. As I lay sleeping, I dreamed I held you. I held you all so tight. I held you oh 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 so tight. I